Okay, morning. Can I just say that uh, we have apologies from the convener, Councillor Lyle. Councillor Duff is substituting Vice Convener, Councillor McCall is subs uh, substituted by Councillor Hearn, Councillor Band substituted by Councillor Donaldson, and Councillor Lane substituted by Councillor Parrott. So in the absence of the convener and vice convener today, we need to appoint a convener to chair today's meeting. Can I make a suggestion that as Councillor Shires is the only one here that's actually on the committee and the rest of us are all substitutes, that Councillor Shires <laughs> chairs the meeting? Is everyone... Are your microphones working? Yeah. Well, as the uh, last man, woman, person standing on the committee, um, I welcome everyone to today's meeting of the Property Subcommittee. Um, do, we've, we've done the apologies then and the substitutions. Um, are there item two any declarations of interest? None. Um, so the next item is the minute of the meeting of the 19th of August. How does that stand, given I'm the only person that would have actually been in attendance? Just to agree. We're happy to agree the, the minute for, for approval. Agree. Agree. Thank you. Um, takes us on to item four, the school estate property progress update. So over to you, Greg. Yes, thank you, Kavina. Um, I'll do the normal run through. Um, I'll run us through um, the updates on all the, the school projects um, since the last update of the 17th of June. Um, so we're running through uh, some of the key milestones uh, at the top of page eight. Um, so Bertha Park High School. Um, so, sorry, Kavina, I'll just, um, I'll, I'll take questions as, as, as when required. Um, Bertha Park High School, um, obviously that opened on the 21st of August and all the pupils now are, uh, are attending the new additional school within, within Perth and Conross. Um, the Bleagarrow Recreational Centre uh, replacement, um, we've now submitted the, the, the project and it's, it's off and running um, and we're looking at an indicative date of March 2023. And we're also looking to um, set up a user reference group with, uh, with some of the key stakeholders regarding the project, and that should happen uh, towards the end of the calendar year. Moving on to in, in Stewart Primary School um, and the additional nursery, which will be built. Um, um, I can now uh, confirm now the, the contractor is now on site. Um, we anticipated for the end of the month, but um, they, they went on site during the, the school, uh, school break. Moving on to Long Forgan Primary School. Um, there's uh, been a delay to the project. Um, it was anticipated it would be complete for uh, April uh, 2020, um, but due to um, issues um, with the, the listed building, um, it now will um, become operational in uh, July and the, the, the pupils will return in August and then next year. Uh, North Muirton uh, Balhousie um, coming together into a new, uh, the new school. Um, the new project request was submitted in July uh, and we're targeting a delivery date of uh, August 2022 um, for the completion. Uh, Perth High School, um, the placement of Perth High School, uh, the new project request was submitted, which kicks off the project in uh, June 2019. Um, and we're obviously working through that and we'll be looking to have the user reference group uh, at the commencement of the, the new ca uh, calendar year in 2020. Pitt Pickern Primary School, uh, the placement of the dining hall and, and some other refurbishment works within the site, including heating and, and toilets, uh, now is, is, is fully complete and we've moved off site. Okay, I'll go into the more the details within the appendix, starting on page 16. Um, and please free to fire off any questions if you have any. Um, so again, I've just kind of touched on there, Bertha Park uh, on page 16 now is, is fully operational. Um, Bligger Recreational Centre, um, kind of just touched based on there. Um, so that's, that's moving, moving forward. Uh, in Stewart again, that was also within the key milestones, um, so that will um, open next August. 
uh, Letham Primary School, which wasn't within the milestones, uh, I'm pleased to confirm that the project's progressing well uh, and will be complete the works uh, for next next summer. Uh, Lonfargan uh, extension was obviously within the milestones earlier on, um, so that's progressing and we've communicated with parents regarding the, the delay from the Easter break to uh, the summer holidays, after the summer holidays. Can I just ask on that, Greg, what the feedback from parents has been and are there any implications for the transport arrangements? Um, no, everything's, uh, every, everything's uh, been communicated and there's been a couple of inquiries but nothing no negative feedback, um, and the head teacher not confirmed. Confirmed that was one of my questions for thing this morning, just to make sure. But the both head teachers are, are okay. Yeah, no issues. And the transport so. Yes, everything's in place to make sure that uh, continues. Yeah. Uh, again, as mentioned earlier, the milestones is the the new school uh, consisting of North Mutant Balhousey is is progressing as planned uh, for an operational date of August two thousand and twenty-two. Oak Bank um, nursery, exten nursery extension. Um, I can pl please to confirm, even though within the um, kind of key milestones there, the start date was November, but we went on site uh, during the, the, the October school holidays. Um, so the project is up and running now. Uh, Perth High School, we touched on earlier. Um, so that's um, moving forward, and you, you may or may have be aware that the, the 12 uh, week pre application kicked off and there'll be a public meeting on Monday, the 28th of, of October. Not unsurprisingly, at this stage of the project, there's a lot of TBC in a, a project of this size and uh, this uh, state of development. Um, and notwithstanding that which will be discussed with stakeholders at the meeting, um, the situation in the school will need to be addressed. Um, it's clear that a, there's always a balancing act between investing in that which you've got in, anticip in anticipation of a brand new facility but um, it is largely understood, I think, and I'm sure that the convener will be aware that there are some real pressures for uh, learners and teachers in that building. Uh, and in terms of learners, not the least of which is the dining facility capacity and the toileting situation in the high school, I understand to be uh, pretty dire, uh, really. Um, and I, I just... <coughs> uh, I know that we're limited in terms of we've, we've only got the building that we've got until we've got the new school, but can I ask that it's looked at or, or how would we address that? Because I'm pretty sure that, you know, kids in feeder schools in primary six and seven, uh, well, maybe not actually, if you've got 2023 down there for an operational building, it's still at years of being in the current building. And I think we probably should look at and possibly engage with the the young learners themselves say, what is, just in plain language, what is the worst thing about being in this school at the minute in terms of the building? And I think they'll come back to us with uh, the dining facilities and the toilet and situation in the building. So is there something we can do competently to address that in between now and having a new school operational? Uh, um, uh, Councillor, um I think the answer is yes. I mean, I've, I think I'd like to pick up on your comments and with, with a site visit, uh, and particularly what you're saying. We've, we have invested significantly in the building over the last three, four, four, four years, and between um, education and uh, pro property service, we've identified money to keep the building going until two 2023 in terms of re revenue funding. Um, but outside of this, if I can pick up on those two, uh, two areas that you've raised concern with, and we'll come back to you. Um, can, I, can I just ask, I noticed that a number of the people are the same team that would have been involved in Bertha Park um, about sort of learning experiences because it's amazing but I dare say that you know there'll be other things that, that we'll want to. So it's about the user reference group and how are they going to go out and have a look at Bertha Park and see you know the kind of facilities that were built there and you know that kind of thing. 
Um, if I can say yes, there are uh, you know, Robertsons and, and Nor um, are, are common to Bertha Park. Um, I have to, just having opened Bertha Park, I have to say it's probably now five years out of date. It's one of those things you put in process. So uh, yes, it is not going to be a replica of um, uh, of Bertha Park. Things have moved on a bit as they, as, as they always do, um, and uh, that whole user reference group. We're certainly going to learn from Bertha Park on what went well and what you know in, in hindsight uh, you know. Um, it's maybe not as good as it could have been, which I don't think there's many things. Um, but uh, you know, education is a, it's a constantly moving target, and, and building facilities to meet those um, is, is one of those. Um, if I could just pick up on one of the things we're doing in Perth, in Perth High School is at this moment in time, given the um, <coughs> the, the, the low carbon objective or uh, targets that have recently come through from the UK Climate Commission and the, and the Scottish Government. Again, we're doing a full reappraisal of, of Perth High School with regard to um, how we achieve lower carbons when we when we open oh, lower carbon when we open this in four or five years' time, where the targets and aspirations will be much higher. So that's part part built in. Can I can I go back to that point then with the Blagary Recreation Centre? What what actually what does that actually mean? I think we can, you can build to current building standards now, or where, we, where we've got with Blair Rec and North Muirton and big projects just now to say, well, where, where, what are the options going forward um, in terms of net zero carbon, in, in terms of um, generation, on, generation on site, in terms of increased insulation towards the passive house um, options. So that, you know, with, with the moving target, and again, we're, you know, there's a member's motion in June to council, and we are we're intended to bring a climate strategy to council uh, at the end before the end of this year. We are we are heavily involved in these projects, and it would be remiss of us to not look at the various options now. So, I don't know exactly what it means, but we're working on potentially coming up with some, a number of options around the Blair Rec, Perth High School, North Muirton, big ticket, big ticket projects at the moment. Councillor Parr. A couple of questions, if I may. Um, first of all, the, the flash to bang time at Bertha Park between the takeover of the building and, and, and the introduction of pupils to it seemed to be incredibly quick. Are there, are there any snagging works still going on at um, Bertha Park? There was, um, Bertha Park is 12,000 square metres. There were 303 snags at that, which for this property of that size, yep. and those were all minor. Right. There, was a, there were a lot of lessons to learn mm. from the Bertha Park process. Um, that we're feeding back into Perth High School. Um, one of the, I, I, you know, and, and, and one of the things was the project, as you're aware, was delayed for 12 months. Mm -hmm. What we as a council did, we invested in the design team fees during that during that time. So I think from Robertson's perspective and the design team's perspective, we went on site a lot better prepared, and that has resulted in a in a a more finished, a better finished building at the end. So, so essentially those minor snagging works are not impacting on the experience of teachers or pupils not, at all? Not, not yeah. at all. I mean, when I say 300, 300 minor snags, yeah. that's, my, that's a minor snag in, a, in, yeah. in this building of that size. And, and, and if I may, um, I was at a parent-teacher council meeting recently at St Ninian's, and, and there's a concern that the works there are, are overrunning um, and, and won't be finished by, I think it says, December here. Um, can I be reassured as to what is actually the, the situation with the works there? Thank you. The, the, the um, you know, obviously works at the, mo at the moment, and again, we're in October, um, and December's only two months away. I'm, I'm informed by the design team and the contractor um, that uh, December is feasible, and that's what we're working towards. Thanks. Can I go back to 3.5 and also page 22 in the appendix, North Mutant and Valhousie? Uh, in fact, I happened to be on the Lifelong Learning Committee the, when the decision was taken to close Balhousie. That was a decision the SNP group opposed, but the decision has been taken. What I do want to ask now is, is it being treated as a merger of the two schools? And secondly, uh, do, do you have a proposed name for the new school? Uh, Councillor Johnson, um, 
We will be looking to appoint a head teacher for the two, the two sites. Um, we're kind of working up kind of business change kind of plan about how we pull that together. Um, I know speaking to Sharon Johnson, the head of education, um, we're looking to have things in place 18 months prior to the school opening. Um, and part of that will be the full engagement with, with obviously the parent councils and the communities about a new name for the school. So there will be extensive consultation with yeah, parents on that. Yes, right. I can confirm that, yeah. yeah. Councillor Dugan. Thanks, Kevin. It's just a supplementary to your uh, question and the response that you received um, from Mr Crawford. It's, uh, I'm very uh, enthused to hear uh, the way that officers are approaching um, the climate ambitions of the Council, given how relatively recent those ambitions have been articulated by members. Um, am I right in saying, though, that the elected members of the Council will need to uh, um, uh, discern between here, you know, if we take the high school, for example, or a, a, a Blair Rec anywhere, if we take, here's the building that we need to deliver uh, for this, for X amount of operational, uh, you know, you know um, facilities, and it will all cost this. If you want it with the gold-plated environmental standard, it will cost that. Is that the kind of decision that all, uh, elected members are going to have to transact? I don't know what... It, it means, to be perfectly honest, in terms of capital costs and revenues, potential revenue savings going forward, and that's the exercise I'm carrying out at the moment. But that would, uh, I believe, come back to the members for, for a decision. I only ask, convener, because I think there is um, widespread understanding amongst elected members that it's all very well to have the ambition, but you have to actually also pay for it. Um, so uh, I just wanted to, to clarify. I'm not obviously not chair of this committee, but how this is going to come forward to us so that we have um, a degree of um, understanding about, you know, what the options, you know, about training around what the options actually mean so that we can be informed when we're asked to make decisions about something that's quite new to most of us and we will none of us be experts on um, how that's going to be taken forward. If I could just answer what the process within the technical departments, we are currently looking at um, the options of building per the building current building regulations and building with potentially uh, a, net a net zero school. What does that look? What does a net zero school in terms of being able to generate um, electricity power on site, um, increased um, increased insulation? What does that cost? And does that have a payback over a, the life of the building over 40 years of that initial capital invest? Is it is it worth doing? And equally, there's you know within um, within the UK there's these aspirations, and some of it technology is not um, not at the market yet. Um, so we're working through those options as part of the initial design phase given between North Muirton, Bullhousie, Blair Rec and Perth High School there's £80 million worth of capital investment and a, and a big carbon footprint from those three buildings. So if, if I don't start looking at that now, I can make an, you know, it's up to council ultimately to make that decision. I mean, we have reduced our carbon from a uh, carbon footprint of the buildings from about six years, years ago, 20,000 tonnes. We were down to, I think last year, um, about 13,000 tonnes. But the 2030 target actually brings us to, it would have to be 4,000 tonnes in 2030. Now that's not that far away. <laughs> uh, and we've got to make a big shift to, to achieve that. Now some of that will be mixed through capital investment, but other, um, other things will be through the actual mix from the gen, you know, electricity is becoming greener and greener and greener. Um, and those, so there's a mix from a mix of uh, fuels. Um, so we're, we're, where we are at the moment is exploring with the design teams what the options are. Okay, um, just finishing off on the, the appendix, um, Pitcairn, we kind of mentioned that's now, now complete, uh, the, the dining hall and the, the refurbishment within the school. Um, moving on to page 26, um, we're at the primary school. Um, so that project's now um, it commenced. Um, we're looking obviously firm up on costs, but obviously we, d we did have delay on that project um, due to the, the public and kind of engagement with the, the local community. Um, we'll be looking now at a target date of April 21 um, for completion and starting on site next, next summer. Can I just ask, in addition to this work, Greg, the other work at the school where we are with, with the other the toilets and various other items in the school? 
th things are, are, are obviously pro progressing uh, on, on site. Uh, um, I don't know if Stephen's got a bit more. I, I, to be quite honest, I don't have an, an update on the toilets, but I can come back to you after this. Uh, it's, it's we, we touched on, uh, so we're working t towards the, the, the end of the calendar year uh, to complete the works. And that's the, the appendix uh, for today. <coughs> Happy to take any final questions on the report. Any questions? No. Thank you very much, Greg. And that takes us on to the private paper P1.